he mentioned Fonnie Willis, uh, Magic Mike, and today uh, Misha Maynard uh, is a good friend of mine. I, I've known this young lady a long time. She first ran for city council. She lost, um, but she was very much a part of her community, and then she ran for state rep, and she won, um, and she's now uh, running for her second term. Um, and she'll that election is the primary is coming up and she should run. A, she should run away with that. Um, and she's going to sh- not shock anybody by winning as a Republican because she recently flipped over to be uh, a part of the Republican Party. Um, and, and, and she's a, a case study in when she wins. And I believe she will win. Um, she's a case study. in when she, when she wins, she'll be a case study. And if you're working for the community in which you are lead or le- are a leader, um, um, you, people will vote for you. They don't care about party affiliation. They will vote for you. Um, so anyway, she wrote a guest um, a guest op-ed in peachpundit.com. And it's about the title of it is Hypocrisy in Black Communities, the Fonnie Willis Case. And she lays out in the beginning of this op-ed about the hypocrisy around the Fonnie Willis case, uh, Fonnie Willis, DA, District Attorney Fonnie Willis. And essentially what she lays out is that Fonnie Willis first won the, her seat against Paul Howard because Paul Howard had had so many um, issues of um, uh, sexual misconduct in his office. Now, now that these were the accusations. Women had accused him. One woman took it to court. She lost in court. But there were a lot of accusations of improper, improprieties around women and the treatment of women uh, by District Attorney former district attorney Paul Howard in his office. And that was one of the linchpins of Fonnie Willis's case against him when she ran and beat him in a runoff. That was one of the central tenets of her campaign. I'm a woman. I know what it's like to have men leer at you, to have men propose, uh, you know, uh, come on to you in the workplace. And that would never happen in my office if you elect me. And so Misha Maynard lays out that part in the per- first part of her her um, um, op-ed, where she essentially says that well, we elected you and now all you're doing is what Paul Howard did. And her central argument is if a male were dating a female subordinate and special prosecutor and and giving her a contract all everyone will be up in arms the me too movement people would be like, oh my god this is so wrong this is wrong and what amisha main was laying out is like why is it a difference when it's a woman and a male but one of the things that she writes and i'm going to read here she said um she said the uh, hypocrisy in black communities from elected leaders is beyond unacceptable and costly to those who need someone to fight for them. For the sake of, quote, keeping it real, this is dangerous. Reality does not permit, quote, letting things slide when people have mouths to feed. We must stop protecting leaders that have given us nothing to, quote, take to the bank. Instead, she goes on to say, we let them take it to the pulpit like an episode in Saints and Sinners, miscalculating how their actions are negatively impacting two other black women, Mrs. Nathan Wade and her daughter. It is disappointing. This is her words, her op-ed. It is disappointing to see black churches praise sexual misconduct in the workplace and prioritize hypocrisy over God's word. Listening to parishioners chant amen during Fonny's sermons is political pulpit pimping at best. God is watching his church idolize the Democratic Party as its new savior, worshiping the elected and choosing blasphemy over God's call for repentance. She goes on to say, whether from the pulpit or the court, the sacred oath taken by prosecutors is more than a person swearing that they will uphold the laws of the state and protect its citizens. It is the citizens' trust in the system to hold people accountable, including the district attorneys they elect. This is a powerful, powerful op-ed, and I urge you all to read it. I urge you all to read it because it is very powerful. Because Misha Maynard, running as a Republican in a Vine City area in that district, this is speaking truth to power. 
You know, uh, the late, great Dr. Joseph Lowry used to always talk about speaking truth to power. I will never forget, I was on the radio during Coretta Scott King's funeral, and he got up in a pulpit, and George W. Bush was behind him, and he was talking about what the administration wasn't doing and what the administration was doing. And everyone lauded Dr. Lowry, and rightfully so, because in that moment, Reverend Dr. Lowry was speaking truth to power. Because the powerful, the most powerful man in the world was sitting right behind him in that pulpit. Well, let me tell you what real speak, and that's real speaking truth to power. Well, let me tell you another example of speaking truth to power. When you are a Republican elected official in a hugely 85, 90% Democrat district, and you're running for reelection, and you write an op-ed about the hypocrisy, not only in the black church, but amongst black elected elite leaders, elected officials, and using the DA Fonnie Willis case as a perfect example of that, you are speaking truth to power. And ladies and gentlemen, there is no more braver person who does that. In the midst of an ongoing reelection campaign, my sister who's stronger than the man she's running against in character, in morality and ethics, She spoke truth to power in this op-ed. It's in peachpundit.com. You need to read it, and you need to see what true courage looks like. You need to see what truth looks like, and you need to see what it means to be honest with people even when you need their vote to keep your political career going. This op-ed is powerful. It should be shared everywhere because it's truly speaking truth to power.